Good evening, Kevin. You well? Uh, very, very well. Uh, you know, I was just talking to a copper there who f phoned in who says, as far as he can see, the law was definitely broken. Uh, now, uh, Boris, he hasn't technically yet lied about this party, but he has lied throughout his life. Uh, he's a well-known liar. And I think this situation uh, has brought into sharp focus. It's not something that I, um, by inclination, I don't sort of like talking about integrity and people telling the truth. I, no one goes into politics to be a saint. Uh, but I do think uh, it's taught me a lesson that uh, actually the man or the woman in charge of this country needs to be a person of character and a person of integrity. Uh, and uh, what we've got is a guy who everyone with impunity, without fear of being sued or arrested, can say our Prime Minister is a little boy liar. And the reason he can't do anything about it is because it's true. That's not acceptable, is it? Yeah, the greatest truth about lies are when lies are exposed, therefore bringing out the truth. And so we have a situation here whereby series upon series of incidents have happened with Johnson over the years. So it causes most of the public to look at him. And I think a lot of people look to Boris Johnson, give him the benefit of the doubt over the years, saying, well, because, you know, he cracks a good joke or he <laughs> ruffles up his hair and he has a great turn of phrase. But this one is very, very different. This one is about hypocrisy. It's also about what we all went through in our own individual ways during the first lockdown, when good yes, businesses yeah, were shut, exactly the right. of their own, yeah. um, schools were shut. Kids couldn't see their friends. The elderly were often in isolation for weeks on end. Families were split apart. We were told to lock down and literally strip out many of the joys of our lives, close our businesses, and literally have a half-life for weeks on end. And the majority of people in this country went along with it. Whether they agreed with it or not, they did it. And yet we have our government and our Prime Minister in 10 Downing Street clinking glasses with the great and good, not abiding by the very same rules that they set themselves. And there's a point where I think Britain generally, we're a nation largely of tolerance and rule takers, whether we agree with it or not. And this is the biggest set of rules that this country has adhered to for weeks on end, and yet we have our Prime Minister, the head of the pack, having drinks parties in Downing Street. And then trying to find ways of potentially of covering up the stories emerging today about, you know, various briefings and memos to, to delete any sort of evidence on people's phones of anyone who's attend staff members attending the party. And the public are looking at this and a line has been crossed. And I don't think there's any way back for Johnson on this one now. Right, indeed. Uh, let's just have a quick uh, listen to uh, Boris Johnson uh, in Parliament today. Mr Speaker, I want to apologise. I know that millions of people across this country have made extraordinary sacrifices over the last 18 months. I know the anguish that they have been through, unable to mourn their relatives, unable to live their lives as they want or to do the things they love. And I know the rage they feel with me and with the government I lead when they think that in Downing Street itself the rules are not being properly followed by the people who make the rules. And to them and to this house, I offer my heartfelt apologies. That's extraordinary, isn't it, James? That was one hell of an apology from a man who hates more than anything to say sorry. He hates saying sorry. But he was told uh, by senior Tories uh, yesterday, if you remember on Sky News, he said, I can't, I can't tell you whether or not I was in a party in my own back garden uh, until Sue Gray's inquiry is over. Uh, he was told, you better improve on that. You better go into PMQs tomorrow and you better say sorry. So he had to do it. Uh, but there you have it. Even yesterday, he's trying to manoeuvre his way out of it. What is the the last resort of the political scoundrel it is to call an inquiry and then say i can't comment until that inquiry is over he tried to do this with partygate uh, and it didn't work don't forget this latest party it was the ninth uh, allegedly illegal downing street party that is being investigated nine i mean this is ludicrous isn't it it, is, it seems to me that back in sort of April, May, or the, the only hospitality um, venue 
that was functioning at full capacity with no social distancing and no restrictions seems to be the ones on Whitehall and Downing Street. And the pub, you know, the public are tolerant, as I said, but they're looking at this and there's a sense of outrage. Everyone I'm speaking to is basically saying the same thing about this, that enough is enough. We've done all of that and sacrificed in many, many different ways, so many social and professional things over this entire crisis. And yet those at the top are not adhering to the rules that they set. And Johnson, I think a lot of people will look at Johnson and think, well, it doesn't come as much of a surprise with him that this has happened based on his track record in a number of different areas in his life. And I don't think he will get, not that he's had much anyway, but I don't think he will claw back the moral authority anymore as prime minister. I think there's a point when someone is prime minister, when they hit the skids. It happens with every prime minister. It has definitely happened with Johnson here. And I'm something that I don't think there's any way back from. That's why he apologised. There's no wriggle room for him anymore mm -hmm. on this. And if anything else emerges, then I think, you know, we're at a point now with Boris Johnson whereby people are looking for the problems. The goodwill is gone. And when a prime minister gets to that point, it happened with Theresa May with the Brexit negotiations. It's happening with Johnson over sleaze. And it's happening with Johnson over hypocrisy, over a very difficult time for this country. And I think the public have had enough of his jolly japes and his capers and his ruffling of his hair and thinking, well, it's just Boris. He can get away with that. He's Teflon. He cracks a good joke. People are done with that now. People are angry. And with this crisis, when fear in a crisis turns into anger, that, when harnessed in the right way, is a very potent force when it comes from the public. And I think the public are at that point with this government and also with Johnson.